place as president of the United States. Um, so a lot of very interesting things are going on. It's very controversial topics without getting too much into it. Uh, something very, uh, very interesting. It was virtual. So most people watch it from home. Uh, so Shirley, I'm going to start with you. How are you consuming all of this, uh, all of this news uh, nowadays? Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch the inauguration, even though it was virtual and accessible. Um, I get my news through Instagram and Twitter. And so with that, I was able to get snippets of it and like be able to get those snippets and be able to like put them together to see a bigger picture and for me to be able to digest and understand it. I, I did. I did watch, uh, you know, on glance at it. Uh, every now and then and I the thing that really impressed me the most was uh, the speech of uh, Amanda Gorman uh, I think she's the author of the the one for whom food is not enough and it was like a poem and it, it was amazing I mean it gave me the ghost, uh, uh, goosebumps yeah goosebumps because uh, I mean her expressions and everything I, I, I really liked it a lot I think it was beautiful yeah, I mean, uh, like Nelson said, it's a very uh, divisive topic to mention what's going on in the country. But uh, just wanted to say, you know, as, as divided as we are, it, it is, you know, your duty as an American to pay attention to what's going on, especially on a historic day like this. Um, I think I read somewhere that this is the first time since 1869 that the predecessor president did not attend the incoming president's inauguration. It's only happened four other times. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it's kind of a, I, I want to say a, a volcano. It's, it's been building for a while of this, the tension between the two sides of America. And today I think it's, it's a good way to, for everyone to come together and kind of move forward to, to the next year, next four years. Um, Next chapter. Stay optimistic. Yeah, yeah. I think what we're seeing is we're seeing the next chapter, right? And and uh, definitely, Austin. I think you uh, hit it right in, in the nail. Um, this, we've been very de divisive, but I think also technology has played a very pivotal role in that. You know, we. I think President Trump has been one of the most. Uh, uh, technology savvy president in the past, even even more the more so than Barack Obama, which was very technology savvy. Him taking advantage of social media and all that it has to offer, I think uh, allowed allowed him to go uncensored and, and communicate a lot of things. So we're we're definitely seeing technology play a pivotal part uh, in elections and in, in the presidency and politics and companies. And I think it's going to, you know, for us as a company that provides support and technology is going to be front and center, right? Te social media and technology is going to be front and center. Whenever there was an outage or whenever there's a server down, it impacts these kinds of things. And it, and, and it, and it has a, a significant role uh, not just in politics, but in other things, business as well. And, gotcha. and today, I think hopefully, as the 46th president takes office, uh, we will continue to use technology, hopefully in, in some shape uh, that allows us to get united. But we definitely see a big part of social media and technology playing a pivotal role in, in communications and things like that. Absolutely. And, and before we used to have the newspaper or a particular news channel, um, now we have social media and all these mediums and all these ways to uh, get information. Now the information is not, it's not streamlined uh, to us by a particular, or particular way. Now we get all sorts of information from everywhere, especially on the internet. So everybody gets to their own conclusion and everybody consume all of this in, in, in whatever way 
they see fit. Me, I definitely watch inauguration uh, on my lunch break uh, and, and YouTube. I used, I was watching it on YouTube and it was very interesting. Which channel? Uh, which, which channel do you uh, watch it on? I think it was uh, ABC channel. ABC also, you channel one on of, YouTube. One of the big ones. Yeah. yeah I, yes. I watched it on, uh, there's this guy, I think it's Morning Invest, the name of the channel. And he used to be an anchor on, uh, I think it was NBC. And the guy seems pretty serious, but you know, he's one of those uh, independent pages now, like um, independent journalists, I think they could call themselves that. And he right. said, he gave us like a really interesting um, news. Like he said something about the ninth president back in like 1846 or 1864, I can't remember. I think it was Henry something. And the guy came out to give his speech and it was really, really cold. And he didn't w want to uh, wear like a hat or a, a cover or, or gloves or anything because he wanted to show how strong he was, right, for the, for the people. Right. Well, his speech was like uh, 8,000 words long. I think it's wow. been one of, one of the longest. And he died 32 days later because of uh, pneumonia. pneumonia. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I was blown away. I was like, wow, that's a little, bit, that happen? A little bit of history. And, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, right, right. And and um, so we need to learn history in order to be able to move forward and not repeat it. And yeah. and speak of 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 moving forward. Um, most people watch the inauguration at home. They were forced to stay at home. Just a couple of handful of people were there. So most people watch it like like us, you know, at home, YouTube, social media, maybe TV. So I think I, I think one of the things that is different about this year, right? It's also we have COVID and we had, you know, kind of like some some of the things that were happening in DC that now prevent people from going there. So it's a combination of the, the stuff that was happening a couple of weeks ago and also the virus is still, you still are asked to quarantine and to uh, not go to big gatherings. So um, definitely a first for politics and a first for a, a lot of things, you know? Yeah, we're exactly. definitely trending to staying more at home and doing things at home and having access to those things which leads us into our topic of, you know, does will technology keep us at home? Absolutely, absolutely. I, what, uh, what are you guys saying are, uh, what things are gonna stay, what things are going back to where it was? Uh, I think that uh, there are two types of technology, the ones that are gonna replace uh, everybody and the ones that are, uh, the ones that are gonna replace the service and the ones that are complementing uh, the service. Like for example, I think that uh, education, e-learning, they're going back to school. I don't think that we are too, we're not that advanced into, into technology in order to be able to facilitate and keeping kids at home. And plus, not just technology, I think there are other mm -hmm. circumstances that technology can control. Uh, parents, they have to go to work. And, and, and just, I think it's for best interest it's the best interest for everybody to for for the kids, for the students to be hands on with the student with the teachers. I think it's the best interest for the teachers to be hands on with the students, and I think it's the best interest for the parents for the students to be at school. Right. I think that they're gonna. I think they're gonna go right back where it was, but definitely some advantages, some things are going to stay. I think that the possibility of virtual education and uh, in, in dependent circumstances are gonna are gonna are gonna stay. Maybe if, if somebody is particularly sick or they had an uh, an injury or or whatever situation. Uh, but what are the things you guys are think that it's going to stay, or it's just gonna go back to where it was? I think you're right, Nelson. I think uh, that. Technology, it, it definitely can uh, play a, a big role in, in education when on sick days and, and if someone's injured or they can't make it to physical school. But I think kids are struggling with uh, online learning and especially the, the younger uh, 
part of the generation. I'm talking like younger than middle school or middle school, I guess, because it's not really that they aren't, you know, attracted to technology. They love uh, tablets and, and games and, and things of that nature, but they lack the discipline to stay focused uh, during these online classes. And that will hurt them, you know, in the long run in the development of their learning. But I think things like shopping, uh, you know, where there's not a whole lot of uh, mental decision making, it's, it's more convenient, uh, you know, the curbside, del curbside and, and delivery methods, I think those will all stick around and, and uh, we will appreciate them. And, 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 and I think, and I'm gonna let you guys pick now, but um, in my opinion, I think that Amazon, it's, has been a very um, a big retailer during the past couple of years we've been we've seen the rise of amazon and it is most people um main way to 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 do their shopping i think starting 2021 okay when i think of shopping I, I still think of malls i think i still think of going to the mall getting into my car and driving to a physical place um i i think that starting 2021 and forward i think that amazon is going to start replacing that. I think that um, well, Amazon we saw, will start well, being the main way to for people to to do their their shopping. Well, we saw that even before COVID, right? The the fall of the re of the retail malls uh, was in you know full swing. We we saw the malls are becoming extinct, you know, and you had to have you had to have a, a reason other than going to the store to go to the malls. You know, we saw a lot of kids hanging out at the malls just to get together with friends. Now they do that online. So yeah, definitely um, you were going to have more uh, stores, you know, going online and doing the, the curbside and things like that. That was even before Amazon. But I think the, the, the key thing, the key takeaway from, from the coronavirus is that is the retail will be shifting more towards online even if they have a storefront where you go and pick up stuff you will buy online and then go pick it up on, on a curbside and to touch on curbside like the other day austin and i took personality test to myers brig one and like we're both introverts and like as an introvert i'd rather go through curbside and it also helps me make more meaningful decisive purchases instead of like oh like I want this just because it's there <laughs> and so I prefer online shopping for that reason too true there there's going to be stuff like Home Depot is never going to be online right you may you may buy something online but you if you wanted to buy plywood or paint or something like that you still want to go into the store and look at those right. kinds of things but for the most part a big portion of the retail consumption is going to be online that's, yeah, that's well, definitely not going to change. My personal experience, just the other day, I ordered something from, from uh, Walmart. And then, you know, on top of paying a certain amount for the delivery, which you could avoid because Walmart is five minutes away. Right. But there, is also, there is also the issue with, you know, you might have purchased some lines, but then when they went to pick them up, it, it was out of stock. And then when you get your items, you notice, hey, there is no lines here. Then you go back to the list and you see that it was out of stock and things like that, you know. So you still need the limes, right? right. You know, and, and that's but, you know part part of it. But I think one of the things that's going to be changing for all these stores is that they weren't thinking about curbside before, right? Now new stores have to have a curb curbside. And, and gonna I was be, gonna, I was actually yeah. gonna say that I, starting 2021, 20, starting this year forward. If, if you if you're a retailer and if you're not making the customers life easier and you don't have some sort of uh, virtual experience like ordering online or curbside pickup or somehow some way you making your uh, customers your life, life easier, easier um, you're you're you you're in trouble you could see yeah. yourself in trouble or you probably make your life your business a lot harder uh, because definitely some of these processes are definitely are going to stay. 
And, and it's not just retail, like the restaurant business as well, right? Mm-hmm. You can have a very formal restaurant, but if you don't have a curbside pickup, that will hurt your business. That will hurt your business. I think the key thing is customer focus, customer oriented, making the life of the customer easier for them is the is the key it, that's where you find your uh, game changers you know yeah and and what about uh in the health industry we've seen uh telehealth and and you telemedicine. know uh, telemedicine and all kinds of you know virtual uh consultation uh with an ipad you know on a computer or things like that but definitely your health even, even uh, the Yes, even the even the, even the, even the, even the Apple Watch, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think, in my opinion, I think that's um, that's one point. Retail is going to make it's going to definitely. Uh, we are going to spend more time at home retailing, but when it comes to health, I think that that is going to go back. Not everything, but I think it's going to go back pretty much to to the people. My health, I don't want to leave my health to the chance of technology. I know technology plays a big part of, of the health industry, but I want to have that hands-on interaction with a doctor. I want to be able to say to see me to take uh, whatever test he needs to take rather than, uh, rather than uh, virtually. Maybe for now, maybe in the future, might be different, but I think that for now, we're not that advanced as of yet. It also has to do with the inaccessibility of those equipment that doctors use. That If you're using telehealth at home, like you don't have access to a scale or like a blood pressure machine and things like that. So it just yeah. makes it harder. Or even if you, go ahead, Austin, go ahead. I agree with you guys. I think telehealth does have its limitations. Um, but thinking in a broader scale, I think that uh, health ca- the healthcare industry is closely going to be bonded with technology forever, uh, mm-hmm. because once they adopt something, they kind of take off and run with it. Uh, one benefit I can see telehealth is, uh, let's say you're in Texas and there's no specialist for a rare disease that you may have, the telehealth aspect would make it easier for someone across the country, or maybe even in a different country, to give you consultation and and that is a benefit, it, just the communication aspect. But I completely agree with you, Nelson. I think there's there's no substituting seeing having a doctor's visit and actually, you know, being inspected. Mm-hmm. We're we're talking today about technology and how technology is going to change after the pandemic. One of the things that I that I think, and it's this is touching on your point, Austin, is the communication is definitely changing, right? Uh, we've seen a big shift in communication with with Teams and Zoom and these applications where you can actually have, you know, visual communications with people. I think uh, whether it's telemedicine, telehealth, or anything else, you're going to see a big part of that staying here. And and technologies like 5G and faster internet speed making it. Um, enabling that change, right? Enabling the ability to have video communication. And it, and that plays part in re, uh, working remotely. Uh, I think that we've talked about this a lot of times in, the, in, in this podcast that remote work is here, is here to stay. However, uh, that's a good point. The point of communication, I think that's also there's plenty of room for communication to be improved somehow, some way, because I think that we don't have that human interaction. That's that body language that we can read, that face expression uh, that you can't read. A lot of miscommunication might happen in these like Microsoft Teams or or Zoom. Uh, yeah, even even in, in using like a like a virtual meeting like a conference call or something like that you still don't have that uh complete uh body language you know so uh a lot of miscommunication might might happen you don't get that instant feedback that sometimes uh you need and 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 people work people workflows are different 
you know, some people are don't need to communicate that much. Other types of work commun need to communicate a little more. So those are the type of things that we need to keep an eye on. And I still think that um, in 2021, remote work is going to be it's going to start being a trend. Uh, but uh, communication aspect, we still have a lot of room for for improvement. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. Um, but I think, I mean, we've been a year, almost a year into this now mm -hmm. where we started working remote and, uh, you know, we as, as human uh, beings, we, we adapt very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that what you're saying is 100% right. Uh, so, but right now we're also in a situation where, for example, an implementation where you usually need the, uh, the implementation team on site, it now can be done remotely uh, to avoid the chances of, of people getting sick and, and things like that when traveling. So we just need to make sure that everything is explained very well. Uh, where possible, send you know screenshots so people have visibility of what you're actually trying to say or 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 do in a in a specific system. Uh, so I think we just need to keep finding ways, uh, or better ways to to explain ourselves and and make sure that everyone is on the same page uh, when dealing with uh, issues and things like that. But but having said that, I mean for us as a company. Um, we are going to continue to have offices. We're going to continue to have people work remote, and we're going to we're planning on going back to the office. So, while you know, technology is enabling all these uh, benefits of working from home, there is an aspect of training, of collaboration, of uh, camaraderie that needs to be there for growth, for uh, you know, for a number of things that. You, you know, having an office environment, having a, a, a place where we get together is important, you know. Um, so I, I think you're going to see the acceptance of working from home as, as a broader topic. But I think you will still have people going to offices and, you know, working together, collaborating, uh, communicating and planning things. You know, I think those things are, are going to be part of who we are, they always been, you know. Yeah, we're gonna be open to the idea of working from home, but the camaraderie, the, com the, the collaboration, the training, some of that stuff, I think will, you know, will never go away. Completely agree with you there, Israel. And one thing about camaraderie, I think that technology misses is the informal communication. You know, uh, I think an example of, of a video that we watched earlier was uh, there's no more conversations as you're passing someone, you know, there's, there's no more elevator speeches uh, because technology has as great as it is. And as, as far as it has come in, in the terms of email and instant messaging and video conferencing, there's nothing like uh, just a quick chat with someone to mm -hmm. express an idea or a feeling. So it, there are some aspects that haven't been, fully exposed yet or maybe they never will be and I think that's what will drive us back to to working in an office environment yeah absolutely absolutely um and another another point uh going back to what we were talking about earlier uh especially uh more this is more linked towards the health uh, bullet point is the fact that we uh, we we need to start building more technology for seniors to make their life a lot easier. The seniors are still very intimidated by technology, um, and sometimes the impression of technology being built for younger audience, for high income uh, people, uh, might drive this. Uh, seniors away and i think that technology we uh, needs to do a better job of being more welcoming for the seniors and and build more technology for them especially uh for the health industry that they, they're gonna need a lot they, they're just not gonna trust it yeah i mean you know technology is usually adapted easily easily 
by younger generations, right? Uh, I know my folks have a hard time trying to understand, not not as a Zoom meeting, but just changing the TV, you know, the remote control. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think technology needs to do a better job at uh, making things easier for the older generations for them to use it and to adapt to it and to, and to embrace it. I think that's the key word is, the the older generation embracing the technology if it's if it's easier to use and simpler yes, i think that, I, I think that. i think with time it, go ahead austin yeah I, I completely agree i think that's part of the the issue it needs to be developed more towards the elderly and and they need to be accepting as well and then i think there's a mm -hmm. third part that is our responsibility to not really gatekeep the technology from them. I think it's, you know, you can see it in not just technology, but other uh, avenues, music, television, any kind of uh, media. The younger generation tends to keep cool things away from the older generation for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, but it, it definitely is something that should be shared with everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, I think we experience that firsthand also in some of our clients when it's time to teach uh, like a new application or, or a new, the, the use of a new device to, to an older generation, then it becomes more, you know, it's a, we need to have more patience, be more tolerant and, and remember that the words that are coming out of our mouth might not be, you know, they, they might not understand it as simply, uh, as, simply as, as, as we do, because we already know the job and we know uh, like, how how the device works and things like that so we we do leave that struggle sometimes when uh training uh, an older generation and how to do uh, certain things for our clients yeah absolutely all right guys i think that's it for today uh, that's a wrap and uh, i want to thank you guys for uh, being here, we definitely look forward to what's going to happen in 2020 regarding, technolo uh, regarding technology. Either way, um, some things are going to go back, some things are going to stay, or some things are kind of going to stay, but kind of going to go back. Uh, either way, we saw a lot of technological advantage that we are going to start taking advantage of. I don't, we never seen technology rarely go backwards. It always moves forward, so a lot of things are gonna start, uh, are gonna stay, are gonna start improving, evolving until it's it's the thing, you know. Uh, so and and to the point of the elder, elderly, I think that that that's a good indicator to when you see a shift of culture that the elderly or the senior are being more welcoming towards technology. I think that's a good indicator that we're in an advanced uh, stage of technology. So mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, it, as you heard, Israel, we, we're starting to move back to the office. We're hiring. Um, so if you want to be part of our team, make sure that you contact us. We'll be more than happy to uh, speak to you. We're hiring um, consultants. We're hiring sales and uh, operations. So feel free to reach out to us. and. Follow us on social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, not Facebook, I'm sorry. Um, Twitter. And uh, also we're on Spotify and on Apple Music. Make sure you subscribe and listen to every episode. Thank you, guys. And we're going to see you the next time. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys.